morning. Good morning and uh, welcome. It's Jerry, Rice Road Greenhouses, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about container gardening. It's become such a hot item in the garden centers. Uh, why is it such so popular? We're also going to look at how do you take care of these plants. Uh, we're going to look at some of the neat plants that you can put in these containers, uh, how to fertilize them. So we're going to just give you a little bit of information on what do you do with these containers to keep them looking great all season long. Okay, as we go up here, I'm just going to show you, this is our typical red grass that everybody loves. Okay, this one here is called Fireworks. So, again, another one that's really cool, does great on your, look, I've had this sitting on my deck in this pot for a month now. I haven't done nothing to it. I water it and fertilize it. It's, it's that easy to take care of. This, they love the sun, so it brings out the colors. Come on up. We traditionally like to deal with uh, spikes. Spikes is a centerpiece. Uh, the plant you're looking at here is we're using papyrus for a centerpiece. Quite unique and different. Other centerpieces we have is the Cleome. The Cleome Proven Winners has done this plant here and uh, it's this guy right here. It just doesn't stop blooming. It will go all summer long without a whole lot of anything. This one's in a pot in itself with a few trailer plants. Uh, it takes up a nice area, uh, a great, great summer blooming plant, something you can't go wrong with. An easy rule of thumb to container designing is uh, thriller, spiller, filler. Okay? The thriller being something like a spike, something that comes up right that really stands out. Your fillers are something that comes around the rim, and the spiller is something that comes over and falls down. Uh, very easy concept. Keep this in mind whenever you're des designing your own containers. Well, some of the fillers, we're looking at fillers filling in a pot, not getting this big tall stuff, but filling up a pot. If you look at this color combination, amazing, your pinks, there's three different colors together. This is one of our varieties we had this year that you could buy as a combo, one little pot. That's what it was, we stuck it in. It also trails over, but we're looking for fillers, something to fill in. This was our new black petunia this year, really hit in the garden center. We sold tons and tons of this, and it's something to fill the pot up. This is what we want to see, something filling in around those pots so that you really don't see a whole lot of the pot. Looking at color contrasting when we're doing fillers. So if you're contrasting, you want to get some leaf color in, that's something different than your green, something than your blues. And in something like this, it just, uh, again, great fillers that just uh, will fill up the whole top, some lobelia, some angelonia. This is, a, this is a great plant too, I love this plant here. Uh, we threw a few petunias in there, and I, again, I love leaf color, just, just great leaf color. You know, an amazing contrast. Okay, we'll touch a little bit about some of the spillers. Okay, spillers, we want stuff falling over and down the pot. Uh, this is a Million Bells petunia, an amazing color, tangerine color. It just blooms all summer long. And all the new petunias, like all your petunias from cuttings, your million bells, your super petunias, your wave petunias. It's not like the olden days when you had to deadhead each little one off and clean them up. These guys are such vigorous growers. They will just keep producing flowers. I don't do nothing to that. It just grows, I feed it, because they grow so fast, you need to feed them fertilizer. And it just spills over the side. So petunias are amazing. Okay, we run into some bacopas. We mix the petunias with, with our, uh, here's our fillers up here, and our spiller was the bacopa here, this white bacopa, just soft, dainty, falling down, and just, it just keeps flowing. By the end of the season, that will be touching the ground. And again, I see we use some more petunias in here, uh, just a, and you can get some amazing colors in the petunias. Uh, some other spillers that we are using is the Ipomeo potato vine. And we have a sample of both of them here. We've got the blackie, which is coming down, and even the uh, even this, uh, the yellow or the lime. We'll use this one. It's such a vigorous grower. Actually, my wife will come out here and pinch them. Otherwise, they just get so big they even take over a little bit. So she'll come and pinch back what she doesn't like out of that. And again, hot sunny spot right here. We're using some portulacas to spill over the side, along with some along with some scavola or Austrian fan flower. I needed to show you these thrillers. These are mandevillas. The, the, uh, we have them at the garden center. Uh, and this is something I need to let you know that I don't plant these planters. My wife does. And my wife has, comes from no horticultural background, period. 
she just knows she, she looks at him and she likes the idea of the, the height so there's your there's your uh, you know your thriller she'll put in some fillers in here and then she puts in some spillers and uh, she likes color coordinating things uh, getting certain colors together uh, again contrasting your leaf color with bloom colors and it ends up like this and I'm always just amazed how easy it seems to be when I would think it should be more difficult. Now, to have these and not give them any water, not give them any fertilizer, they're not going to look like this. One of the things is watering. When it's hot like this, or any time, water early in the morning. Water them in the morning, if you can, before you get off to work so that they get a good amount of water. They'll dry off during the day and they'll end up having water, enough water to get through the day. Key key thing is fertilizing so many people you know you think it's like us I like a good meal once in a while these plants have to have a good meal to keep these things blooming like this um, miracle Grow makes it easy it's as simple as pulling out this little bag and if you want there's a bag of fertilizer in here we're gonna mix it in this container here this I find this because I got enough pots to make this thing work I like to just get this easy to open up Pour it in this little container. Screw on the lid and we're going to water them in it. It's actually this simple. What will happen is all the fertilizer will be in here. Once the water turns to a very, very light blue color, your fertilizer is pretty well done. This, will, this little box here will, will allow me to do all of these containers that I have on the deck. There's probably approximately 20 to 30 of them. Uh, typically what will happen is I see so many people make their baskets and they fill them up so full that when they put in their plants, the soil goes to the rim and when they water, all the water just shoots over the edge. You want to make sure that you have maybe an inch or so of depth in your pot so when you water, it holds the water. And it's just, this way it's just not going all over the uh, ground right away, it's going in the pot. You're not, you're not seeing it run all over the ground and we're not wasting water. And that's a good, it's a good equal friendly thing too to making sure the water is staying in the pot and one idea is I always like to take a good look at the pot each day when I'm watering in the morning some need more than others don't give them all the same amount if it looks moist or wet and if you're not really sure the latest technology is called digital the digital uh, technology and just stick your finger in and you can feel it it feels moist it's not a bad thing if you look at it you can usually pull a plant back and say oh it looks pretty moist if it's going to be a hot sunny day and it looks a little moist, give it just a light water. If it looks a little dry, soak it. If you're going into a good hot day, soak it. Okay, another, way, another thing we need to touch on a little bit is deadheading. Deadheading flowers. Some blooms need to be deadheaded to encourage flowers. A geranium. If I would not touch this geranium and let this flower go bad, it will go to seed. And it'll, hence, it'll, all the energy will go to that seed to produce new produce new new plant for the future so what we want to do is when this flower gets done we want to just snip it out I like to use a pair of scissors or a pair of pruners uh, when we're doing these light plants scissors is, is quite fine so what you need to do is about once a week go through and take out all the spent flowers or the finished flowers we want to remove them let's see what else there is in the garden here that we want to remove today a good example here I'm going to my herb garden the basil uh, if we go and uh, leave the basil, the basil is just starting to flower now. If I don't do this and pull out that flower head, it'll start to flower and the rest of the plant will suffer. So we will just take out the very tips, anything that's blooming here. You can see, it's quite obvious, it is a bloom, it's not a leaf, and we'll pull that out. 